Alright guys, this is StockGam with another Minecraft video and today guys I want to do some testing with the mobs and the new building height and whatnot. Oh, <laughs> Skelly Jockey. Cool. Yeah, for that reason I created a new test world. This is a test world in Minecraft. Um, let me have a look. Yeah, 1.2.3, so the latest update as of today. And also I wanted to let you know MC Edit works. Um, there's an unstable version at the moment. Feel free to try it out. I created this world using MC Edit and yeah, no problems so far. Working nicely. Yeah, the test I wanted to do because there were a lot of questions about the new spawning behavior. Is there a limit to the spawning height? I created the area here. This is a half slept out 50 by 50 chunk area. And right down at the bottom here, we are on sea level. So let's have a look. 65, so I'm standing on the half slabs here, so 64.6 um, as the sea level. And we go all the way up um, until the sky limit. And you see those orange blocks here, they are always marking the 10 block increment. And I went up mm. all the way until yeah basically the new build level you can see the increasing y coordinate there and right here we are at y to 20 30 to 40 and we see a spider on here that is to 50 and then of course we have the roof here which would be on the maximum build height at the moment that is half slept out because i want to prevent spawns on top here so we can see um, how high mobs actually can spawn and yeah this is to 30 to 40 looks like so yeah we can probably make use of the spawning height the idea was you know to create traps that are really high up so you could potentially go up to level 240 as you can see we got the spider in there and yeah, spawn your mobs this high up and you have a far distance to go down below and as we know mobs spawn in a radius of 144 blocks but a really important radius is 128 blocks um, because um, 128 blocks is a radius where mobs will not despawn instantly so Outside 128 blocks, they will spawn in a radius of 144 blocks, but will instantly despawn. So, for us, a 128 block radius would be interesting. So, if you imagine now, if you take your ground level, for example, go over C, go up 128 blocks or something, so you're out of reach of any caves below. In theory, you should be able to create a very efficient mob trap on level yeah 128 blocks on top of sea level so 64 plus 128 would be um, 192 so this would be the magic number 192 blocks on top of sea level um, we should try to make traps and as we see mobs can spawn all the way up here to up to level 240. Let's quickly test that. Let's go to peaceful again. Let's check when we spawn some more. We have to be a bit closer. So we are inside our 24 block butter zone radius. That is another radius that is there. Blocks um, <laughs> always matter in Minecraft. So between 24 and 32 blocks mobs will instantly spawn in front of you even and that is very good so yeah up to 240 there we go we see the zombies that was what I was interested in but I've never seen any of them higher than 240 so now I'd say I should take this idea to a real world scenario. I will go to a newly created world in 1.2, uh, try to locate 
uh, an ocean biome which is by now re really simple you can see it here in the indicator uh, the B indicates swampland at the moment and if I cross over here okay taiga you see biome indicator so I can find an ocean biome really easy and yeah you should be able to it's a huge body of water right so okay looking for an ocean biome and I'm gonna build a small trap um, high above the water level and we'll see how it does. Alright, I replicated the setup in a natural environment. You can see I'm in an ocean biome. Around me there's normal world, there's a jungle biome over there. And I'm standing here on a platform on level 192. That is, if you go down, check out the ocean floor ocean floor is 64 so 192 up so 122 blocks up on top of the ocean floor and well out of reach the other areas here I'd say and then I have this platform here and the platform is exactly at height level 192 as I said and then we go up further and then we have this stack of four spawning areas on top of each other and the top here is 283 so you could fit another one in 240 was the limit so you could fit another one in that is good and I didn't go for maximum space efficiency I just wanted to see if it works I have those small spawning pads in there spider safe short water trenches and yeah that basically repeats for four levels so let me check how much spawning space we have we have five by five so 25 by um, yeah by four so it's 100 and we need to subtract the 16 half slabs here so we got 84 spawning spaces per level here oh, I need to take out those 84 per, le per level and yeah multiply that by 4 this is how many spawning floors we have that is not much you can make the trap wider so let's stand here for a while and check the entity counter it's up to 5 now 5 yeah you got mobs coming down 5 this is a small trap keep that in mind but it looks like 9 now the theory is still there 13, 14, 13, yeah, it's picking up. So, if you would stand below your mob trap and keep in mind that it's not a very efficient design, I just quickly hooked that up, but should be okay. 22 we got now. That is actually a fairly good number for such a small trap, I have to say. So, yeah, 25, it's picking up now. And. It's raining and it's night time, so theoretically around us mobs should be able to spawn, it's not daytime. So that is actually surprisingly good, I'm, I'm happy with that. Absolutely. So yeah, it still works, um, you have to keep in mind those numbers I tell you in the video, but if you stick to that plan, kind of look for a flat surface, looks like this ocean area here is well suited and you can find areas like that very easy in your Minecraft worlds. Yeah, and then you just pull it up. Of course you don't have to use wool and all this fancy stuff. And you can use all kinds of farm designs, but yeah, you got a nice butter zone here between about yeah, 220 I'd say up to 240. Within these levels, um should be yeah, able to work with a fall trap. Of course, you could also think of starting your spawning floors here and then um, go back to the mob elevator design. That is another idea that should work as well and go upwards. So, you know, stack multiple levels uh, of... and you stand on, on the maximum building height and bring the mobs up to you. But um, lately I prefer those fall traps before, because you get quick kills. And you can also um, easily adjust that to XP farms. For example, you have just to 
just have to bring that up to a fall height of 23 blocks and all mobs will survive the drop or most of them and you should be able to um, one shot kill them. I think I'm still a bit too far away. Let me quickly demonstrate that for you so you know the idea with those yeah. mob traps as well. Uh, it's still not enough. It has to be a 23 block drop. And then you'll be able to get the one shot kills. So let's see. Uh huh. I think we're in the butter zone now. Yeah. So this is the 23 blocks. Let's go a bit further away. Of course, you would have to stand uh, at least 24 blocks away from the spawning grounds. So, but you could collect mobs and there will be one shot killed. Okay, maybe it's even one block higher. You saw most of them died. You just have to try it out a bit. Yeah, all right. Yep, but the drop height is 23 block. We don't get consistent drops from here. Keep that in mind. You know, mobs drop from um, different heights. If you want to limit that, I can quickly show you that as well. Um, there's a neat little trick. You can use the vines uh, in, uh, that are in the game to reset fall height uh, in trap setups like this. I just quickly need to remove this stuff here. So, look, the problem is if you count from here, exactly from here, you would have exactly 23 blocks um, if you make a platform down. But if the mobs come from further up, like this one, you know, they will die. So it's not consistent. So if you want to make it consistent, you just extend your drop here. And it's a, a yeah, cross-shaped drop, so you don't get any clock, clock ups. And you pick up some buttons and go to your next swamp biome. Um, grab some some wines from the trees. Let me, I'm gonna pick them here from my inventory. Let me see where they're at. I've never found them and I never used them. In creative so far. I'm sorry when I have to search for stuff a bit. Okay, so put down w wines like that. <laughs> I was having a hard time to pronounce it. The buttons, um, they prevent um, the wines from growing too hard and by doing this, you know, you can now um, reset the fall height. All mobs that will come down through the chute um, will normally catch onto those vines and thus, uh, you know, will be stopped a bit and have a consistent drop height. Let's quickly look if you can see it with a mob. Skelly, yeah. See, so they get slowed down a bit and thus you get a consistent drop height. You can work with the setup a bit, but you can use the wines to do that and then you can reset your drop height to about 23 blocks and start to harvest XP. Another uh, thing I want to address is using uh, Iron Golem to sort out creepers for record farming. And there you go. Now we have the consistent drop height and all of these mobs should be one shot killed. The zombies have slightly more hit points but creepers and skeletons will be one shot killed. And thus you can easily create an XP farm. So last thing I want to show you or I want to try out is working a bit with the iron golems. Alright guys, so got some iron golems here and let's see what they do to the mobs who come by. Yep, immediately attack them and still using the same setup. Kind of having inconsistent spawn rates, not quite sure what's going on. So, but this idea definitely works. You could have iron golems here. They will not touch creepers. You can see, just let them pass by. But of course, they will immediately attack any zombies or skeletons or anything else coming by. So let's see. Let's get some mobs down here. All right. Spawn rates are picking up slowly. This is a very rough setup, of course, you know, you, right now the um, golems can be attacked 
and can take damage, you should try to avoid that. I just wanted to test out the theory, and yes indeed. <laughs> you shall not pass. Definitely. Yeah, Skelly's fighting back. Also, looks they're trying hard to get away from the Iron Golem, or is it just random? Not quite sure. That needs some testing on a huge scale in a really efficient mob trap. I can see what they can do. But yeah, definitely seems like two of them are good enough to sort a stream of mobs like that. If you have more, of course you need a stronger system. Cool. So yeah, it's another new thing you can do now with the whoops <laughs> always flying off another new cool thing you can do now with the new update 1.2 and I'd say that concludes our little yeah adventure through mob science again really cool looking forward to many new things as usual feel free to post new ideas and inventions as video responses to this video here all video responses will be auto approved on this one because you want to spread the news and the information about the latest update <laughs> and I'd say that's it for today I'm out didn't survive bye bye <laughs>